I'm going to demonstrate the neutral suspension cast technique using plaster of Paris. There are a couple of essential parts of this process in terms of positioning of the foot, which we're going to go over. And it really all starts with the patient positioning when we begin the process. Get the patient positioned so they're comfortable, so their knee is relaxed and bent slightly to relieve any tension on the gastroc and the Achilles. Get their foot and yourself positioned so that when you're ready to lift and put them in subtail or neutral, everything is relaxed and well lined up. Once everything is set up, we're going to draw two key landmarks, a bisection of the first metatarsophalangeal joint and a bisection of the fifth metatarsophalangeal joint using just a Sharpie pen. This tells the lab where to set the balance platforms so the length of the orthosis is accurately placed in an optimal position to control the forefoot. When we use plaster of Paris, one of the problems practitioners have is getting the plaster on in a way that there are no wrinkles, bunching, or flaws that actually distort the anatomy of the foot. And so I'm going to show you a couple pearls to make sure this is done properly to get the best outcome with your orthotic. The first thing is dip your two strips of plaster into water together at the start so they both begin to cure at the same rate and they literally meld together at the same rate to produce one cast. So I'm going to dip the first plaster in the water and I'm not going to do anything other than just lay it on the edge of the basin and I'm going to go ahead and dip the second strip of plaster and this strip we're going to begin to rub out the plaster and really the wetter the plaster is believe it or not the faster it's going to cure by getting it good and wet you can work in the moisture into all of the particles of plaster to activate the curing process quickly. I like to rub it out ahead of time. You don't have to do that. You fold a slight hem at the top of the first strip and the placement of this is as close to the malleolus as you can get it medially and laterally just below the malleolus and just over the top of the foot. You have the patient hold their foot dorsiflexed and you mold the plaster first of all medially into the arch and then laterally making sure that it's a clean overlap with no bunching or wrinkling including the heel. Now the second piece has been curing just as at the same rate as the first piece so they're going to go on the foot and they're going to cure as one cast. We're going to rub out the plaster again activate those particles of plaster which have a catalyst to start hardening. This one has no hem at the top. We're going to gently drape it over the toes and bring it back essentially parallel to and mold it onto the medial side and onto the lateral side. Now what I like to do is lift the lateral and mold it right up into the sulcus of the foot. This gives a nice clean flap on the bottom of the foot. You hold your finger against that flap and bring the medial flap over. Mold the redundant plaster again into the sulcus. So what we have is two clean flaps of plaster right across the metatarsals and all the redundant plaster has been molded up into the sulcus where it won't affect the shape of the cast for the custom orthotic. We mold in to the arch medially and laterally. We have plenty of time here to get everything molded. No gapping of the plaster off the foot. And at this point we have the patient relax their foot. Just totally relax. And now we've already pretty much pre-positioned the foot. We're going to take our hand and we're going to grab the fourth and fifth toes. We're going to move in close so it's comfortable for us to lift the fourth and fifth toes. We're going to palpate the head of the talus and we're going to find subtalar neutral and we're going to just simply lift the foot upward. This loads and locks the mid tarsal joint which is critical. 
The lifting is only on the fourth and fifth toes and it's in a direction straight up from the floor and we're taking care to make sure the patient does not fire their tibialis anterior which is commonly done when they first feel their foot being lifted. They tend to lift with you and you try to make sure that they're not lifting, that they relax. A good way to assure that is just push down gently on the top of the first metatarsal. By doing so you'll reduce any forefoot supinatus and you'll make sure that they're not actively supinating their foot against you. So they are relaxed, you push down gently on the first ray, lock the mid-tarsal joint, subtalar is neutral, and we're going to hold this. Now we only have to hold this for about a minute because we've waited appropriately to get the plaster on, get everything molded. This doesn't take real long at this point. We usually put the water at room temperature or maybe slightly warmer than room temperature. You don't want it too hot because it will diminish or take away the amount of time you have to get everything set up. So as I'm holding this foot in subtalar neutral with the mid-tarsal joint locked, I'm feeling the plaster cure and harden and we're just about done. We want to make sure that it is cured before we attempt to take it off the foot. We don't want to distort the cast. You'll note there's no significant wrinkles or bunching. The heel of this cast has no redundant plaster. It's all been molded through the back of the cast and off the weight bearing surface. This assures that the interior of the cast is smooth and captures the anatomy of the foot. Some of the mistakes practitioners make is they grab across to digits 3 and 2 which then may inadvertently supinate the forefoot. Or the common error is they just don't lift hard enough and lift forcibly enough to really adequately lock the mid-tarsal joint. A good way to just test yourself what during the curing process is occasionally just lift the foot and make sure as you lift the leg comes with the foot and there's no excessive motion in the ankle. If there is, that means you're not locking the foot properly. A good technique at this point, since you're going to be casting both feet, is to not remove this cast right away. We're getting ready and we're certainly ready to go ahead and move to the other foot. What I do is just have the patient relax their foot and I'll loosen the cast just slightly over the top and I'll leave that there and move to the other foot and duplicate that process. And when I'm done with the other foot, I'll come back to the first foot and I'll just at the very top just gently lift, pull from the heel down and try not to distort the forefoot of the cast as you bring it off the front of the foot.